Um, all right, let's move on from here and let's talk about um, this level, okay? <clears throat> There's a lot more you can do on this. It's actually really fun to do research on these things and if you start Googling it you, and asking the right questions, like the one you asked, um, you can get some, some fun stuff. Um, people will argue about it. There are a lot of cartographers out there who are really dedicated to their art who will tell you all kinds of things. So, uh, nations. This is what I call kind of the, um, the cultural setting of, um, of a fantasy novel or a science fiction novel. I would suggest that you uh, stretch a little ways. You try on this to come up with some things that are a little bit different um, because there are a lot of areas you can go to that, um, that, that if you think about it, that um, I feel like I gave this lecture, but I probably just gave it at LTUE, um, that um, there are a lot of cool things you can do that people aren't doing. For instance, governments. One of the reasons we write speculative fiction is to ask what if. Asking a few what if questions about your government could be really cool. What if all, you know, the people who ruled were the, were the oldest in the culture? What if the people who ruled were X, Y, or Z? What if? Coming up with just a few, cup, uh, a few cool quirks for either your government or your culture or your religion can really serve to distinguish your setting from all of the other settings. And it can also give you good plot hooks and story hooks and concepts like this. So <coughs> governments you can do. Um, religion. What do people worship and why? Um, what, what are in, what's interesting about their worship services? What does it require of them? What doesn't it require of them? Um, gender roles. Um, can you do something interesting with gender roles? Uh, simply reversing it on its head is usually boring. It's been done a bunch of times. Um, instead, try and dig a little bit deeper and say, what's different about the gender roles in this society and why is it there? And, and what's cool about it? I'm, one of the things I love about the Wheel of Time is the gender role reversal that's going on. It's just a slight one. But if you've got a world where all the people who can use magic that are men go insane and, and kill everyone they love and the women don't, it changes the dynamic of society. Um, one of the cool things about um, Wheel of Time is instead of trying to make a matriarchal society, which again I said can, is done a little over much. Um, what he did was he made um, the world have female privilege instead of male privilege. Do you guys know about male privilege? You researched about this, the concept? Male privilege, white privilege in our society. Um, it, it's, it's fascinating read. What it simply means is that however the way our society is, it uh, defaults to male. If you don't know the gender of someone, you default to male. Um, if a man walks into some place, he generally has what we call male privilege. The instant thing that people look at, um, look at the guy, um, give him a little bit more credit, a little bit more strength. Um, the assumptions made about him that he's going to be correct, whereas if the person is female, that doesn't happen. Um, and it's something that is in our society, it's not necessarily a good thing, but it is something there that you need to be aware of. And when we talk about racism, um, or, or sexism or things like this, there's actually, you know, there's these words that are branded like this that are just, you know, immediate gut reaction. I'm not sexist. Of course I'm not sexist. Um, and we have this like, Ugh. but w if you can like get rid of the, um, the assumptions about it, all those that, you know, if you can use the word like not as capital S sexist, but if you can understand sexist relating to male privilege, you can understand what it means um, to society to have that, or white privilege. And if you can do things with race relations, uh, be very careful with these things, okay? Um, very careful, do your research, but the idea is if you can change gender roles or um, race relations, in Wheel of Time there's female privilege. Um, when a woman walks in, it's assumed that she is right. People just assume that, or they assume that she's going to be in a dominant position in the conversation. What it means is that people who read The Wheel of Time, particularly men, often get really annoyed at the women for the same reason that, um, that a lot of women in our society get annoyed at the men um, because of the natural assumption of the culture that in our culture men are going to be right and in their culture women are going to be right. Has anyone taken um, classes on gender roles um, and things like this? Um, am, I, am I hitting it a little kind of right here? It's, it's worth reading about and knowing about just to know how a society and a culture will act. So as far as like... Take the wheel of time for example. Yes. 
you have you know this this female bias, yes. so to speak. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, he kind of changes it up, and a lot of people don't like the Aes Sedai or whatever. Right, they don't. So is in the that same, how you can kind of make it different? Well, so yeah, but in the same way, people don't like it, the, um, the Aes Sedai in the Wheel of Time world. For the same reason, in our world, they don't like politicians. Um, and it's politicians, and if you think about that, in our heads popped into our minds, a clean-cut man in a white, you know, in a suit and tie is a politician. This is probably the tie isn't on, because, you know. And that is who we associate with the establishment. They associate the Aes Sedai with the establishment. Um, and so what he's doing is he's changing the bias very subtly in the, um, in the culture. Um, and it, it creates for some fascinating reading if you're seeing, if you're noticing what he's doing. And you can do this with race relations and gender roles. The thing is, number one, be very careful. Like I said, um, go read about race fail. <laughs> Just Google race fail, uh, one word. Um, Google race fail, and um, and start reading about the other. If this is interesting to you. Um, I think it is something that needs to be approached more. Almost everybody who is um, on the other side, side who is um, in what we would call a, a minority, is saying we need more of this. We need to talk about this. But blundering into it, kind of like, ah, I'm going to, you know, um, can often create a story that's even worse. <coughs> so um, do your research, but it is the sort of thing you should be reading about, I would suggest. Yes? Was that what you were aiming for in, in Stormlight with the uh, light eyes, dark eyes, the sort of race relation? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play with race relations um, a little bit and base racism on something in their culture that is not something we have in our culture. Um, and that's one of the things that we do in fantasy and science fiction is we can take two steps away. Instead of making it about skin color, we can make it about something else and still deal with the same topics in a way that, main, that allows us as a writer to cast off some of the emotional baggage um, that would come from that. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm doing. Um, but I'm also very fascinated with gender roles, and you can see that in, um, in The Way of Kings, some of the gender role stuff that I'm doing. So, um, there you go, that, but there are a ton of these, okay? There are just so many, and researching about other cu cultures, you know, what are, what are the cultural mores? Uh, did you say that moray or more? I don't even know, Whatever sociologist, it is. is it moray? Yeah. yeah, what are the cultural mores? Um, you know, what is offensive? In Korea, you don't show your bottom of your foot to people. Uh, it's considered a great offense. Um, what is, uh, what's the language like? Linguistics. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a ton of these. What are other things? Um, cultural, culturally, the economics, yeah. Uh, proximity to who you're talking to. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, something more than the more A's proximity. Technology. Yeah, there you go. Technology and warfare. Is there something about tech or warfare that changes? We're talking about, you know, <coughs> not things about um, about the nature of the world, but the way that the humans interact in it. Maybe just what's considered <coughs> honorable or yeah, yeah, codes of codes of ethics. Um, this is an amores. Um, yeah. Family structure. Ooh, yeah, good. Thank you. Family structure. There's so much depth here that you can go to. And if you picked three of these. Oh, did you have another one, Travis? Oh, um, I had a question. Well, oh. Actually, I think you were about to get to it. So okay. If you picked three of these and said, I'm going to have something original in my nation for, for three of these different ones, and the rest of them I'm not going to focus on. Because you can't do everything in a book. Keep that in mind. Um, if you want to do something that's exhaustive as the Way of Kings, you can maybe pick like six or seven. Um, but you can't do everything in every book. Um, I learned this early on with my books where I made linguistics a big important part of Elantris and I designed you know, all the different fields for the languages and then I came to Mistborn and realized this was not a plot point. I didn't need this. We had an empire that had been ruling for a thousand years. Um, it was taking place in one city. Um, I was just going to not focus on linguistics and I was instead going to focus on religion um, in that one, which I also had done in, um, in Elantris, but I, I, I took religion and I spent more time um, on the, uh, the social dynamics and things like that and the economics instead of uh, the linguistics. You don't have to invent a new language for every book. 
Um, it just depends on what you want to do. Pick a few of these, make them really interesting and quirky and unique. Come up with a new government type or a new religion or, you know, the code of ethics is really fascinating about your, um, the world you live in and make that pervasive in life and your, your setting will be distinctive. All right. Um, basically, this is to make you think about all this stuff and just add a few more interesting elements to your stories. All right. Let's talk about magic systems. Um, this. Did you have anything that are local, or was that kind of covered? Yeah, well, I kind of covered in all of this stuff. Um, I mean, local is going to be. This is the stuff that's national, and then local you would pick. You know, your little um, the village that the person is from, uh, or the city they're from, and do some of the same stuff just for their village, or for their town. Um, you know, pick one distinctive thing about the town and two distinctive things about the um, kingdom and then make that the focus of your storytelling um, where it comes uh, for world building, yeah. I was wondering if you had any uh, books that, any fantasy books that uh, helped you get better at world building that you could recommend? Ah, uh, boy. That do a good job. Who does a good job? I think Erickson does a great job with his world building. Um, I think um, Rothfuss has done a pretty good job with his world building. Um, I really like Anne McCaffrey's world building. I always thought she was um, she was stellar. Um, the book Guns, Germs, and Steel is um, is fin fascinating read for this sort of thing. Um, there's another really good one. It's just a history of warfare. I'm trying to remember what it is. Thing is, most technological development has been spurred by warfare throughout the history of the world. Um, and so, whether it's the compass or whether it's the stirrup, um, these are basically warfare related. Sometimes they are food and trade related, which always kind of relate back to warfare. But you know, keep that that in mind. Food, trade, warfare. Basically, you can you can you can you can get rid of it and just say food and war are where everything is everything's boiling down to. And you're usually having war to get more food, get more land. So 